Hey guys, welcome back to Modern Life for the 70s Mind. My name is Bob, and I've been away for a little bit, only because, I don't know if you can tell my face, I went down to Florida and worked on my farmer's tan, <laughs> and it was a success. I really should have taken my shirt off, but anyways, um, it's good to be back, and it's good to be listening to some music again. As you know, before I get into the reaction part of this, I always like to go back and talk about things from time past. Uh, this one that I'm going to talk about today is really special to me because it's been a passion of mine. And as I'm looking up in the in the ceiling, there's a one big butt spider up there, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that as I do this. Um, <laughs> nice. Um, I'm not totally afraid of spiders, but I could live without them. I'm hoping this one is just going to eat some of the other little bugs that might be walking around. Anyways, <laughs> that's going to bug me this whole video. Um, one of the things that I've been really focusing in on probably the last seven, eight, nine years is record adapters. Uh, for those of you that may be too young to really know that darn spider that might not know what a record adapter exactly is um normally a record album has i wish i had an album in front of me a tiny hole in the middle right and that's what you put on the turntable 45s have a big hole so the problem would be how do you play this on a turntable that only has a tiny hole um thing sticking up I don't even know what the name of it is but um, to fix to fix that problem they came out with these 45 record adapters that fit inside the record and now you have a tiny hole so you can put it on the turntable and play um, this shape is called a Rekaton I believe it's pronounced this is probably one of the most popular shapes of it um, sorry the light is making it look really white but it's yellow the only other shape that i knew that i saw around a lot growing up was a duotone adapter that had a slightly different shape um, as you can see here both of them have roughly three major points of contact but they basically did the same thing so for some reason why these intrigued me i don't know but they always did so one day when i was looking on ebay i came across this and I'm like what is that because I had no idea what it was well it turns out different parts of the world had different shape adapters this one is from England and I believe it's a gold ring adapter yeah it's called a gold ring adapter and it's the same basic concept it's to stick in the center of a 45 so that you would have a small hole which would allow you to play it on a regular turntable without some big adapter on it so that got me thinking, like, what else is out there? So it became a passion of mine to basically meet people all over the world to try to figure out what the other adapters are that were out there and what shapes they all came in. So I've got thousands of adapters. I couldn't even begin to show you. But I took some of my favorite ones and I mounted them just so you can get an idea. And I think it turned out really, really cool. So here is my adapter collection that I've mounted. I'm going to keep it at an angle so you can see it better. Um, as you can see, they're, they come in like all different shapes and colors. Um, really a fun collection. If you're ever looking to um, collect something, these are a great start. They're relatively inexpensive. They're not the easiest to find, so you got to do some work to find some of them. Um, they come in plastic, they come in metal, um, they come in one piece. Some of them are two pieces that you have to kind of twist together. They're really interesting to the point where I actually started a website. If you're interested in learning more about these, you can visit my website. It's 45recordadapters.com. Uh, I'm not promoting that. I don't make any money off it, but um, it's where I document a lot of it. It's not fully up to date because I've been writing a book. And my book is, for the most part, about these things and the history of them. Because you, when you search 45 record adapters, you don't find a lot of history on them. So, anyways, that has been a passion of mine, and I've loved it. 
And anybody growing up in the 60s, 70s, even some in the 80s, you should be well familiar with those because before the whole tape craze, um, we played vinyl. And um, this is the adapter I use to play my 45s. So there's a lot more to it than, the, than what I'm telling you. I'm keeping it kind of simple. But I thought you might find that interesting to... Um, see a little bit of my collection so all right we do have a reaction video to work on today so let me get my headphones on let me get everything queued up and i'll be right back all right guys welcome back spider update it is still there it has moved probably a couple inches closer to me but if you see me jump up and if it gets near above me i will be moving <laughs> i guarantee you i'm not that afraid of spiders but this is a pretty big one um if you've listened to my channel, you know that I have done numerous videos and reactions to a singer from Norway by the name of Aurora. I have completely fallen in love with her. Her voice and her emotion behind her songs is off the charts. That being said, I was told to listen to someone else from Norway, which, all right, Norway's got some street cred now, so I can go ahead and do that. Um, by the name of Angelina Jordan. Um, I don't know anything about her other than I know she's really young. Uh, I believe when this video was made that she was nine years old. Now, I, I have heard that it's several years old, so maybe she's 10 by now. I don't know. But I've heard nothing but good about her. So I got to give her a chance, especially because she's in Norway and because she's singing one of my favorite old-time songs is... Um, I put a spell on you when she's singing that. Originally, that song was uh, sung by, and I believe it was written by Screaming Jay Hawkins. If you ever have a chance, watch that video because it's wild. It's it's pretty raw. Um, not my favorite version. I think my favorite version of the song was by Nina Simone, who sang it. And her version had more uh, orchestra and horns behind it. it. sounded a little more jazzy, and I really liked it a lot. So I'm really curious how this version will sound. So let's just go right into it. And this is Angelina Jordan singing, I Put a Spell on You. There he is. <laughs> I can see why people ask me to look at this now. That was nuts. I'm not even sure. Norway strikes again. I'm not even sure where to begin on this one. Um, before I even attempt to go into uh, her voices, I've got to make mention of the band. Those are some magnificent mus musicians. They're tight. Um, it's almost like a, a New Orleans sound that I really, really, really like. Um, what's in the drinking water in Norway? Because 
for nine years old, if that's what she is, and she looks maybe that. Um, I've never heard a voice like that before. Um, shouldn't a nine-year-old be playing with toys instead of um, confidently standing there in her bare feet, sounding like she just invented um, music and kicking at rare ends <laughs> while she's doing it? Uh, really nuts. Um, being a child, though, that really means nothing because she is 100% an artist. Um, no one sings like that in even the little bit that I've heard of hers. No one sings like that and isn't just loaded with talent. It's crazy. She is off the charts. Um, as they always say, skills like this, you don't learn them. You're born with them. And she obviously is a natural. Um, it's really nothing short of magical. And where did that deep voice come from? Um, it reminds me a little bit her style of like an Amy Whitehouse, but only better. And um, other than that, I like at the beginning when she held up the candle and she had a picture of Screaming Jay on there, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, amazing. Let's just keep going. I want to hear more of this. Okay, I gotta stop for a second. Um, holy crap. That is... I mean, look at look where I left it. Look at her, like, getting into it. She is all in on this song. Um, I love the... When she said, I love you, I love you, I love you. There was so much feeling in that. And it almost sounded, like, seriously desperate. Which... Um, is so much more than just saying the words, but the way she sang it, her gestures behind it was um, just amazing. She is clearly demonstrating how this song should be sung, <laughs> hands down. Her voice control, uh, and, and her voice control is off the charts, hands down. Her vocal range is off the charts um not that low for a nine-year-old and control of it not just going low but control her talent off the charts um i don't hear any evidence of any um auto tune or anything like that so i'm going to give her full credit for this because she is just skilled to the max um crazy let's just play this to the end i don't want to stop it again Wow, wow, wow. 
nine years old. Give me a break. Um, did you see that last note? I think she held that forever. I think she's still holding it. Um, <laughs> this was a masterpiece, period. You don't need me to tell you that. If you've recommended this, obviously you've seen it before and you knew that you were setting me up for this. <laughs> um, she perfectly, I think, nailed the feeling of the lyrics of this song. Um, you could play this exact same version 50 years ago and it would have fit right in. It would have been perfect. And I think she also found like a kind of a middle ground between Screamin' Jay's version and Nina Simone's because I did hear parts of each but definitely made it her own. No doubt about it. I'm not saying she copied off them because she looked like she was a couple times was even directing the, the band members. So this is all her. There's no doubt about it. It was a magical moment from start to finish. So let me now get my act together again and let me get these headphones off and I will be back. All right. I'm back. That was nuts that was so insanely good i'm having a feeling that this won't be my last angelina jordan song i'm gonna play um well you know one of the best parts of doing these um reaction videos and i've only been doing them now for three weeks i'm i'm pretty new at this one of the best parts of doing these is that i get introduced to some new music this is one that i guarantee you i never in a hundred years would have looked at her and said, Oh, I got to listen to her music. This is just a perfect, perfect example of how you guys are coming up with some great suggestions for me. Thank you very much. Cause this version in itself will be played many times. <laughs> I coming across my uh, computer speakers here. She really found a way to, with her voice and everything, her mannerisms, she found a way to really, I, ch I think, channel some of the great singers of the past. I mean, close your eyes and put her voice up against any of them, and she's right there. Um, I don't want to say I don't know anyone who sings with as much passion and confidence as she does, because Aurora comes to mind, <laughs> but this... Whew, to her sound, it's really a new level of, of vocals. Um, I understand this is a couple years old. I hope, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that her voice hasn't changed over time because it is crazy good. The only really bad news about uh, this, her making this song, is that nobody will ever attempt to sing the song again because <laughs> they will forever be compared to Angelina's version of the song. I, I just don't know how you'd even want to compete with that. Um, it's almost, almost untouchable, I think. <laughs> I do wonder if she's got other styles or does she stick to these old school jazz type songs? Please let me know in the comments below if she's got different styles she sings to, or is this like her comfort zone, what she loves? Because if it is, there's nothing wrong with that because she she's nailed it. But I'm just kind of curious to see if there's other styles of songs or maybe more current songs um, that she sings as well. Anyways, before I forget, I do want to say that the band arrangement and the video production on this was wonderful. The black and white and some of the kind of odd shots that the camera was taking came together wonderfully in this and really made it a fantastic, uh, a fantastic watch. So anyways, thank you for this recommendation. I loved it. As always, if you enjoyed this and my take on it, please click the thumbs up below. And if you could follow my channel and subscribe to it, I would really appreciate it. And if you could share the video, that would be even better. All right, guys. Thank you again for this. This was amazing. I'm going to go watch it again now. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later. Peace out. Till next time.